So we are uh, with uh, Edgar Circle. Uh, we are at the FMBB World Championship. Today it's uh, Saturday. Um, competition for APO stopped, uh, finished to today. So yes. tomorrow will be the finals. Tomorrow will be the finals, yes. Um, Edgar Circle is a, let's say, a big figure in dog sports since uh, years. Um, Edgar, do you want to tell us uh, some things about yourself and how you started? Uh, what are you doing right now? I'm starting in dog sport in 1976 in a club for utility dogs in traditional IPO sport, mm -hmm. in this time was Schutzhund sport and uh, I stay all the time in the same club, like now. Ah, until now? Yes. You are the I don't, chief of this club? I don't uh, change, yes. Uh, me and my friend Björn, we change the leading one by one, so because it's only work. Mm -hmm. We are training dogs and it's not so important for us to do politics in our club. Okay, so uh, it's your profession, dog sports? No. What do you do um, for a living? I'm uh, producing heating systems. Okay, good. So you keep the dog sports for, uh, as a hobby, let's say? Yes, it's a hobby. But I guess it takes most of your time. Eh? It takes a lot of my time because I share my uh, knowledge a little bit in uh, seminars. Mm -hmm. So, um, right now, you are uh, the supervisor now in the, for the APO program in uh, FMB 2017. Yes. And uh, you are also the president of uh, DMC? Yes, I'm also the president of DMC. And you for are no more or less for 12 years. 12 years? Yes. Okay. Before I was a vice president. Um, so until now, uh, what have you achieved, the biggest achievements of your, what, your... Uh, I like to train dogs mm -hmm. with different character and um, I was starting, in DMC we start the idea to do something like a world championship for Belgian Shepherds. In this time it was only European championships. Mm -hmm. We start in uh, 1992. Mm -hmm. And our first own championship in DMC was in 1990. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, EPO only. In EPO only, mm -hmm. yes. But we almost have in our breeding test in the beginning, we have uh, close contact to uh, people from, from France mm -hmm. and also from people to Switzerland. So our first breeding tests were more or less in a, norm, in a, in a ring suit. Okay. I will ask about uh, Kerong also later. Okay. Um, you have also won uh, two World Championships in the past. I win uh, with, with Desert. Mm -hmm. I win uh, two times. Uh, I've been uh, one time FCI World Championship mm -hmm. and one time I win the FMBB World Championship. Mm -hmm. And with uh, Cayman, I win also one time FCI and one time FMBB. So in total? And I was one time winner of the World Cup. In total, I was going to more or less 20, 22, 25 World Championships. And uh, with Cayman, I was nine, nine times competing and seven times on the podium. Great. Well, what, how is the feeling after all these uh, competitions when you enter the field? Now, I mean, after all these competitions, do you still have the same stress or? No. No. When I come from the competition, I think, I think also this is important. If we go in a high competition and you want to be in the Champions League, you need to have your nerves under control. Mm -hmm. It's important. Yes, and, and stress. Also, when stress in the dog and stress in the dog yeah. handler makes no sense. Yes. I think you need to relax. Okay. Um, so, uh, I, at uh, which age you started with dogs? 16 years. 16 years old. Yeah, so and, uh, 15 how, years old. How, how they started? I started with a German Shepherd female. Yes. Straight in sports or? Yes, in like sport. Straight? Direct, I go to sport, yes. Okay. <laughs> so it's like uh, you were meant to go into. Yes, I want to have all my time a dog, but it takes time before my parents say, okay, mm -hmm. you, you can have a dog because they say, okay, oh, you're young and when you're grown up, we need to look, take care for the dog. And when they know that I am go so close to dog sport mm -hmm. and uh, that I am uh, something like a maniac for this thing, they, they really don't want to let me do this. Okay, <laughs> so you were blocking, they were blocking you yes. for doing it. So your first dog was a German Shepherd? Yes, a German Shepherd female. Okay, and uh, you were doing uh, Schutzhund with her? Yes, or? I'm doing Schutzhund with her, okay. yes. And uh, when the first Malinois came? The first Malinois came 
more or less in 1989. 1989, okay, so 20 years yes. from now. No, Sorry. more or less 26, 27 years, yes. So you're, you're German? Yes. And you grew up in Germany? Yes. Where? <coughs> it's, um, it's a city called Mörs. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, near, it's near Düsseldorf. Okay, and where, where did you first show dog sports and you got interested in that? Um, in my daddy's company, there was some, some man who was helping mm -hmm. um, beside his job. And uh, he was also, um, he was also uh, doing dog sport for a long time. Okay. And in this club I start. Okay, good. So none of your family was in dog sports before? No. You started it? No, my family was more in gliding with, uh, with gliders. So. Okay, nice. Yes. Um, so what do you think? Uh, now in uh, the FMBB we see a, a world record of uh, competitors. Uh, in uh, EPO specifically we have uh, 160 nearly... We have 162 registrations mm -hmm. and we have 152 dogs who are, well, can enter mm -hmm. and but 10 dogs go out so we have 142 okay. dogs. And from uh, 41 countries I, I, yes. I saw. Yes. How, how do you feel about that? What do you think uh, EPO I think it's will, will... I think it's great. We start in 1992 with 32 dogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but still, it's uh, not not a small amount, 32 for starting. It was not a small amount, yes. but, but we are worth idealists. As, uh, the, the first man who has the idea was Volker Riedel. He said, okay, we, um, we need to do something in mm -hmm. this. Uh, and then we start. Nice. Uh, and also, we have some competitors here, like uh, Bert Arts. He always was competing in this first European yes? Championship. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so what do you think uh, of the future of EPO? What do you think it will be in some years? Is it growing? Is it going less? What do you think? I think it's a really sport where you need to spend a lot of, lot of efforts. You have a lot of work in this sport. We have this, you need to go trekking, you need to make your obedience, you need to do your protection and, and you need to have a dog with a good temperament, you need to have a dog with a good healthy and... Uh, and this was the reason why we start with Malinois. With the, the idea was, okay, I can go with the Malinois when it's 40 degrees on the outside. But um, when I look now, it changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. It changed a little bit. The sport or the Malinois? The Malinois also changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, uh, the last uh, two years uh, at the FCI and the FMB now, we see, uh, the, um, let's say the judgment of excellence is not easy to get. Yes. It's not easy to get. And, and a lot of competitors are wondering uh, what, it's, what it needs to be done to get an excellent now, now times. I think one of the, the biggest problems is that the people, in, um, when they begin the education of their dogs, that they don't, have, they don't spend too much time for the basics in the things. Mm -hmm. And also, a lot of exercises they do are a little bit connected with corrections. Okay. And um, maybe one example, we have more or less a dog need to sit in IPO in, in obedience 21 times. Okay. So and if you have a problem with sitting in this... And the time, time you get these points. Yes. And on the other side, we have... We have to less people who, who are doing the rules, who really understand mm -hmm. something about it. And then um, something came up from the green table and say, okay, now it's important how you hold your hands and now it's important and this and that, it's now important. But they don't ask the people who are Competing. training dogs. Mm -hmm. This is, in my opinion, a big, a big problem. problem. Yes. And also, it's a big problem that a lot of people think that in one case they can force their dog in one time, in one case. And um, this was also my idea when I started with Cameron, I say, okay, um, it's nice to have a really high performance, mm -hmm. but on yeah. the other side, I want a stability over years. Mm -hmm. And so you need to accept 
after your training, after your education, when the dog is three or three and a half, that you say, okay, some exercises are like they are. So you have to accept how your dog is yes. at some point. And a lot of people try to do something more. They want to count a point more and mm -hmm. lose five points, something like that. I understand. Uh, uh, so, uh, saying that in this uh, FMBB, the stick and the rules are still the same. Yes. And uh, The rules never changed. Okay. So, what is your opinion about the uh, stick removal and the new regulations uh, that we start from 2019? <coughs> the new regulations was, it's, maybe it starts in 2019. Yeah, so maybe. The first idea was 2017. Mm -hmm. And, but, when we, the people are thinking about the, um, to remove the stick hit, this was not the idea of the people who are sitting together and want to create a new IPO rules. Mm -hmm. The idea in new IPO rules was that we have a little bit less difficulty in IPO 1 and in IPO 2, mm -hmm. so that the people who start with the sport uh, have have it a little bit easier to come in up the in the sport or come in to the sport. Do you agree with that? Yes, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think it's because look, what is the the, the big in, in obedience? The difference between IPO one and IPO three is not so yes. big. The difference is not so big. So you are, you you agree with this change of the rules? Yes. And about the stick hit? Maybe let me say something else. I think we are now living in a time mm -hmm. where you need to explain what you want to change and why you want to change mm -hmm. it. In the old times it was like this, they're sitting in a group together, they make a decision and the people Accept take it. it. Yes. They take it. But this time is done, I think. We need to be a little bit more open-minded. Mm -hmm. We need to talk to the people and what they want to see and what they want to like. And, and then we need to explain the ideas we have. Okay. Um, so, uh, the FMBB committee will uh, stick on the stick attack. Yes, until it is in the rules, we want to have it. Okay. Yes. Good. Okay. After uh, after the new um, after last year, the, uh, in the new regulations uh, that the uh, FCI uh, suggested, um, people are talking about a new parallel uh, uh, federation. Mm -hmm. of, uh, let's say, a more working uh, style. What is your opinion about that? <coughs> I, um, I, I, think it's, I think the way needs to be a little bit... Uh, we need to go another way. We need to have people who are really support us in sport. Mm -hmm. uh, support us? Like, who supports who? No, I think if we have, if we have a commission for utility dogs, mm -hmm. Inside of FCI, you mean? Inside yes. of FCI. Mm -hmm. I think they need to support the people from the sport mm -hmm. and not support themselves. Okay, so you would prefer a committee of utility dogs in FCI, maybe it's better that uh, it changes instead of creating a new, let's mm -hmm. say, it, it's not federation. That, it, it's not th that they... It, okay, if you go in the rough, it's, you say, okay, we need to change it, but maybe the people need the chance to have the, they need a chance to mm -hmm. think about it, mm -hmm. and when they uh, really want to do this in, in for us, mm -hmm. things then make no sense to make something else. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, consider, uh, considering all this, you are a judge also, how many years? Oh, I don't know, maybe 10 years or so. Uh, do you think that the judge, uh, in all sports, but specifically in EPO, should be also uh, a guy who competes? It's, this is a, it's a difficult question, because you have some people who are competing mm -hmm. and um, their style and their education is their level of judging. And uh, on, on, on the other side, if you have somebody who really is able to follow the rules and we need to go on this point, we need to explain the rules a little bit better mm -hmm. so that it's more transparent for the people. In, in every time when we don't go by time or by, by high, something mm -hmm. like this, and when people need to look and need to look about the attitude of the dog and, and, and 
about the performance, the technical performance. In, in this way, we every time have a little bit difference, but I think it's not so bad okay. if you have a little bit difference. Because yeah, we are human software. Yes. So, and I think we are not robots, so di digital time is okay, but not too much. <laughs> Some uh, time before, uh, you posted uh, that uh, something new is coming and uh, that we should be all united. What you meant about, about that? What do you mean something new is coming? You wrote in uh, Facebook. In, in Facebook? That we should, uh, the working people should be united. Yes, I think, I, th I think that we, that the, the, the good, not only the good, that the sport does need to come together and mm -hmm. talk together. And that on the field we need fair play. It needs for everybody the same. Mm -hmm. And not that we say, okay, now it's coming. This guy, oh, he's really famous, now we need to take care. And now it's coming some nobody, okay, it's not so important for us, but I think this is not okay. We need to have sport so that everybody who is good in the sport and make good education, mm -hmm. that he almost has the same chance than everybody else. And so it, it has to be more fair for yes. everyone? Yes, I want it more fair. Obviously, you know, maybe DMC more than anyone. Um, what uh, you have to say about the critic uh, people do about uh, Malinos and uh, about, uh, uh, let's say, DMC through Kerung um, promotes, let's say, some lines and the genetic problem starts into the DMC lines. What do you have to say about these critics? I, th <coughs> I think we are really open in DMC. Mm -hmm. that our, our breeders, they can and they do it, they can use dogs mm -hmm. from uh, foreign countries. What we only need, we need that the dog has the highest uh, yeah. competition mm -hmm. in this, what, what you have. It can be monitoring, it can be uh, ring, it can be mm -hmm. IPO, it doesn't matter. And the dogs, we need the hips and we need the elbows and we need the DNA. So, if you want to have a dog from a foreign country, you need to take it and then you can breed with him. So you do, not, you do not agree that dogs that came out from the DMC, they have a... I mean, we see a lot of dogs uh, that they are really mating almost every day. Yeah, but and this, is, this, is a, this is a little bit what the, the breeders are doing. Mm -hmm. There's one dog who wins, he's a famous dog, and then, okay, they go to this dog mm -hmm. because it's easy to sell the, pup, sell mm -hmm. the puppies. Mm -hmm. You don't agree with that? I, I think I don't agree with that because our bidders can, they, we, have, we are open in this, in this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, then what do you have to say about the uh, fake pedigrees? Now it's a big matter. <laughs> I mean, why, first of all, why do you think this is happening? Why breeders go to countries that they don't have uh, registered dogs in FCI and they need to fulfill their bloodlines with dogs outside the, uh, of FCI? Mm. And I think this is a really long-term discussion mm -hmm. in this way, because this, the, the, it starts a little bit in Belgium when the Malino clubs, when the Malino clubs divide in two pieces, mm -hmm. and uh, that one Malino club say, okay, our, only our pedigrees are okay, mm -hmm. and the other Malino no club say the same. Okay, no, not say the same. Mm. They say we don't want to have too much politics here inside. We want to make breed some special kind of dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You th do you think that this is wrong? No, I don't think this is wrong. Mm -hmm. I think uh, when you look to the to the to the to the Malino breed, mm -hmm. I think it's time to put it together, but. What is the motivation if somebody is going on and begin to put the old things out? We need to make a line mm -hmm. and we need to say, okay, now we start with this. And everybody needs to have the chance to do this. I think the people who are going on this point, they are a little bit wrong motivated and they're not looking for a good money noise or something like that. They have the people you say that you are choosing uh, unregistered dogs? Or? No, the people who are now begin and, and want to, to grow this fake pedigree things up. Mm -hmm. I think their motivation is not to have a good money now. Mm -hmm. The motivation is something else. But I, I don't know and I don't care. And for okay. me it's not. What do you think that uh, 
Is there really a need for uh, refresh the bloodlines in FCI? The working, of course, uh, bloodlines. Do you think there is a need if for that? Have, or if, if, you think we, if you think we have a problem with bloodlines, then it's important. Mm -hmm. And it almost happened when it come to when we come too close at it happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our problem only is the first generations are not the dogs we can use for high sport. Mm -hmm. So it comes later. This is a big problem. Okay, I understand. Before some time there was an incident and it happens uh, lately a lot. Uh, people that they have, uh, let's say, uh, bad uh, um, relations with others, uh, they use all the videos or photo photos uh, about the history of people of against them and uh, what do you think about that i mean if for example uh, I, i let's say i was training 20 years or 30 years before with a specific style yes. there wasn't another style then and but until now i evolved of course Look. and they take a video from then and they use it now and they have problems now this is crazy of course what do you think of that this is this is the same with the fake pedigrees this is the same motivations behind mm -hmm. The battle is on the field. The battle is not on the outside. Mm -hmm. This is for me really important. And but some people don't have this morality border. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the people need to come from behind they, and, and need fake accounts and all this. Mm -hmm. shit. Yes, yes. So this is for me, and I, I don't want to, to think about it, and I don't want to touch with these people. For me, this is huh? and also this this Facebook thing make too much problem. Problems and, and, and the people have no border and it, it, I, I don't understand. Um, I think it's important when we want to change something, mm -hmm. we need to do it by judging. If we want to have a dog on the field who is re who is more or less not relaxed, but uh, relaxed Happy. means not mm -hmm. that he's out of work. Yes, uh, then we need to look. Then we need to look. How is the attitude of the dog? Mm -hmm. How is his performance? And this is maybe the way. The only way to change the training is by judging. If you get for a stressed dog your points, you say, well, yes. I need to change. Yes, I agree. That's it. I don't know if you're aware, uh, there is a new kind of, let's say, championship in America. Um, there will be in uh, October the Schutzhund Cup. Uh, the judge will be Helmut Reiser, and the price will be something like 25,000 euro. Mm -hmm. And they will use uh, the regulations of uh, 1990s. What do you think of that? I, I don't hear it. Okay. And if people like it, let's say try. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the, there's the thing uh, with the uh, pressure from uh, the welfare uh, teams about uh, dog spots, about. Uh, and I think uh, the stick hit is a kind of. Uh, touched by them also. Where do you think the, the line should be about what is abuse, what is not abuse, uh, if it's okay or not to use pressure in training? The dog sport is pressure for the dog. What do you think is the, the line, that the boundary that this has to work? The, what the people want to do now is to make them more... That they say, okay, no, 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 no. We, we, we accept, we go down, we go down. I think we need to say, hey, If these people who are looking for farewell, they need to go to foreign countries, what happened with animals there. Mm -hmm. I think this is important, but in our life, and when you see dogs in the nature, it's almost the same. They are sometimes really rough to each other. Mm -hmm. and, and we have sun, we have rain, we have winter, we have really hot, we have really cold, and the dogs on the outside from before they stay on this. But now we have more people who say, oh, everything needs to be nice and, and this and like that. And when you look to the other side of the world and you see a completely different difference, yeah. this is a big difference. So you think that uh, being in the extremes is not healthy? No. And I think that uh, the role of the dog changed a lot uh, the last years. Yes. And in one hand, this is good because we, we are more uh, sophisticated in how they train our dogs and everything. Yes. But I think uh, this escalated a lot. And uh, yes. people are asking from the, their dogs uh, things that the dogs are not capable to give them. Like the, the companionship role, it has escalated a lot, what companion dog means. 
Mm. So if we ask things uh, from dogs that only human can provide us, then I think the, the, the mix, the, the, yeah. the problem starts. And um, do you think the dog sporters, uh, they should stand their ground more? I think the dog sporters need not to fight so much against each mm -hmm. other. Because this is what a lot of time happened. We talk about this video things and all those things. This happened a lot of time. And this is not healthy for us. Um, so, uh, right now, what are, what are you doing? Like, uh, what are your plans for the future? What are my plans for the future? Yes. <laughs> uh, the plans for the future, okay. I want to go on in training dogs. Mm -hmm. So we will see you again in the fields. I hope so. Mm -hmm. But it's difficult to qualify. It's not so easy mm -hmm. to qualify. And uh, it's almost not so easy uh, to get to analyze the dog and go also with different kind of dogs. A mm -hmm. lot of people take a dog and it don't work, take another dog, another dog. I try a lot of time. You know. and with the last dog I have the problem <coughs> that he has his knee problem. Mm -hmm. But I'm not the man who gives the dog away, so I stay at home, it's retired and I hope we'll see So I guess dogs. when you say about different kind of dog, you mean different kind of Malino? Different kind of temperament in Malinois okay. and different characters, yes. Mm -hmm. So, are you a fan of a certain type of Malinois? Yes. Which is it? I like dominant dogs. Mm -hmm. And the one I have now is a little bit high, drivey, mm -hmm. and, and also not so easy to handle, but I like it. So, you need to find a little bit other ways mm -hmm. okay. in, in, in training. But in the end, it's every time the same. You need to explain it. The dog needs to feel comfortable in what he's doing, and mm -hmm. you need to like what he's doing. And. Uh, I prefer that the dog need to grow up in his drives by frustration. By uh, frustration. By frustration mm -hmm. and not by forcing him. Okay. So pressure has to come from this way and not from... Uh, yes, the drive needs to come from this way. Okay. And, and you, see, you see it on the field, a lot of dogs who became a little bit stressed, they became noisy mm -hmm. in the obedience and also okay. in protection. And I think this is a little bit... When, when, when you know a little bit about education, then you know when this came up. And it's difficult because it's, it's an emotion to get it away. Okay. Uh, so, you, uh, talking about the training, uh, so you believe that... Uh, is, there a, is there a way to train a dog for high level without pressure? There's In protection a, spots? There is... A, there is a way to train a dog, mm -hmm. to educate a dog in this way. I think mm -hmm. there is a way, mm -hmm. but it's not possible to train a dog without, without corrections in this way, in the end. Mm -hmm. Yes? I don't, believe that, uh, and I don't believe in a correction when the dog don't know what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. It's unfair. And I think if I do something, I need to see the effect, mm -hmm. the effect immediately. So for you, it, what counts is, let's say, the result. The result, not my points. Eh? I mean, from the character and from yes. the mood of the dog. Yes. And I agree 100% mm. with that. Uh, is there anything that you would like to say to people? To people? Yes. I hope that they go on and train in dog sport. Mm -hmm. That we can, that we really can save our IPO sport. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's really a nice sport. Yes. And... Uh, and what I can say else. What I learned in the stock sport is the king is dead, long live the king. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for this interview. You're welcome. Uh, your organization is perfect. Thank you. One yeah, of the this best, is, uh, the organization is really based on Matthias Dögel mm -hmm. for all the things around. I'm only responsible for the sport. <laughs> okay, ah, and also uh, we should mention that uh, you are up to making seminars worldwide. Yes, I'm doing it. Okay. Um, Edgar, thank you very much. The interview was really nice. And thank you. Uh, I hope we see us in the future again. Okay. Bye, man. Have a nice day. See you. Surfing. That's all we want to do.